since we moved and I don't have any garden set up outside yet in the backyard and I'm really itching to get something uh, started and growing, um, I decided to go ahead and start a few things in my arrow gardens. I got these arrow gardens for Christmas. Steven grabbed a whole bunch of them off of clearance. I gave some away as Christmas gifts to like my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, that kind of stuff. Um, but I kept some for myself because I really wanted to see what I could uh, do indoors during the winter time. I did an initial startup in Oklahoma before we left um, where I tried some of the stuff that the pre-seeded pods that the Aero Gardens came with. They worked so well. So I decided to get the um, grow anything kit that that Aero Garden provides. Um, you can get the off-brand ones from Amazon that just come like in a big bag. Um, but the kit comes with everything that you need to get it started, including like the little, the little holders for the sponges, because it, you put the little sponges in here and this holds it in place. And it also came with like little labels for the seeds so that you know what you started. And these are the little sponges. Let's see if I can get it to focus on here. These are the little sponges here. And you put the seeds in here and the water kind of like makes it expand. So you put your your sponge in the little holder with the seed. You stick it in the hole. <laughs> and uh, you put a little label on the top so you know what it is. And it comes with the little, the little tent, the humidity tent so that when you're trying to get the seedling to sprout, it can contain its humidity. I started with the orange hat tomato from Baker Creek. They, I picked those specifically because I really wanted to see if I could get tomatoes to grow inside my kitchen in the winter time and I could have fresh tomatoes in the winter, which would be fantastic. Um, and that variety in particular only grows to about six to nine inches tall and it worked phenomenally 100 percent recommend um the arrow garden that i have might be slightly small for doing tomatoes but it still worked i got tomatoes <laughs> I set up my arrow gardens here two weeks ago and um, I experimented a little bit. I wanted to get some pansies started for um, pressed flowers and I also started a blue butterfly pea and some bush beans because I was just interested to see how that would work in the arrow garden. Uh, but it's been two weeks and my pansies still haven't germinated. And I think where I messed up with the pansies is I need to cold stratify them to break them out of their dormancy period and I didn't do that. Um, and, and in case you didn't know, cold stratification is some seeds need that cold of, of the winter season um, and then the warming up after the cold to kind of wake up from their dormancy and trigger them to want to germinate. And if that never happens, then they don't get triggered to germinate. And I think pansies are one of those that prefer that I've never grown pansies from seed before which is why um, I should have done more research do your research the bush bean that we tried has been phenomenal and we're just starting to get a little bit of action going on from the blue butterfly pea and uh, well it's really interesting to see how that's going and another thing that I wanted to show you today is how to propagate a, a pothos plant in your arrow garden. Um, so this is super easy to do. You don't have to actually buy more. 
um, you can propagate the one that you have and just clone the same plant over and over again and you get free plant babies and I will show you how to do that. Now, if you don't have an arrow garden, don't fret. You can do this in a bright window too. Uh, try to pick a south facing window so that it gets the most amount of light throughout the day, but an east or a west facing window can also do the trick. All right, so what you're gonna do with your pothos is you're going to pick a strand that's super healthy. Here we go, this one's doing really well. And then you're going to wanna cut in between two leaves just like that. All right, so now we got our branch of pothos cut past the node, and we're going to want to pull this bottom leaf off, like that. And this here is called a node, and that is where the roots will grow from. We're going to want more than one node, so we're gonna pull this leaf off, and this leaf off, and this leaf off. And now we have four nodes here on the stem for roots to grow. We're gonna leave these top two leaves. Okay, so we're going to put the stem into the basket and carefully weave it through the little holes here because we want as much of the stem under the water as possible but we don't want the leaves under the water. Bloop, 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 bloop. After about a week, it'll start growing new leaves and we've got beautiful roots coming from the nodes. Now you're gonna to wanna to let it grow roots until the roots are a few inches long before you pot them in a pot. But once they are, you put them in soil just like any other potted plant. Get down. You put them in soil just like any other potted plant and then you have a brand new baby plant for free. <laughs> All right guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today as I showed you how to propagate your own pothos um, in an arrow garden. Now remember, you don't have to have an arrow garden to be able to propagate your pothos. All you need is a window with lots of bright light, a jar with water, and a cutting of course. <laughs> so thanks for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to give me a nice little thumbs up. It really helps me out. It helps my videos get seen. It helps other people know that you like the video. And next time I will give you an update on the peppers that we started and I'll give you a run through on all of the tomatoes and eggplants I also started. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.